Shalom Saints and welcome back to Wakefulness Theology. My name is Messenger Paula and this video here that we're about to do today is like, I think it's one of the most profound videos I've done since the beginning of this YouTube channel, meaning everything is crystal clear. I mean, just crystal clear, okay? I mean, he, Okay, I, I can't even explain it to you guys. So let me just take you through the steps. And at the end of this video, you're gonna be like me, like that's crystal clear, okay? Um, how to get on the ark, episode 31, be like holy Yahushua. I named it Be Like Holy Yahushua because I was told to do that in, in, in my sleep. I don't know how to explain this, but it's like I go to sleep and it's not exactly a dream. It's just clarity. Like I'm sleeping and then in my mind, I can just see what to do. Like I'm just told like, okay, call this guy, um, do this, do that. The video is uh, Be Like Holy Yahushua, da da da. And I'm just like, just, I'm sleeping and I wake up and it's like, oh, okay. I, I can't explain it. I don't know what that is. It is what it is. So the video is called Be Like Holy Yahushua. Okay. So we've talked about um, all of this and now we are at the escape. So the next uh, couple of videos, we're going to be taking all the information we've learned and applying it to the escape. Um, I'm also going to be uh, continuing where we left off last week. Last week, you guys, with the information we talked about last week, this is going to be, hopefully this is already clearer for you. Uh, we read Revelations 2.17. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches, to him that overcometh. Wow. Saints, you don't. Okay, hold, hold on to your hats, okay? Remember this line right here, to him that overcometh, okay? Remember that. To him that overcometh will I give to eat the hidden manna and will give him a white stone and in the stone a new name written, which no man knoweth, saving he that receiveth it. This is good. This is gonna be crystal clear. All right, crystal clear. Let's keep going. The reason why we're going to look at letter line 217 is because that Bible verse we just read is Revelation 2, verse 17, 217. So the 217 letter line is going to give us clarity as to what's going on, what's going on. Um, 217, salt, prudence, fire, light, rear. So for you guys who are new to my channel, you'll have to go back and do some research about what a leather line is. But in short, this is the Greek and the Hebrew um, definition of 217 from Strong's uh, Concordance, the website. And also rear, it comes from the Roger Thesaurus edition number five. Uh, this is the second holy letter, which is the Gematria of rear. And then you have again the the Roger meaning of 363. And again, here you have the Hebrew and the Greek meaning from Strong's Concordance. So again, salt, prudence, fire, light, rear, changing of mind. I remind, admonish, remind myself, changing of mind, a tree. This is how the Holy Spirit is teaching us what these words mean. We're learning as we go along and if you have watched this playlist, you have, you should be able to recognize these words now. We talked about changing of mind. We talked about changing your mind in relationship to being a tree. Do you guys remember that in the video? Well, here it is as clear as day, changing of mind a tree. It's written. It's written. It's written. Fire and light salt rear all right saints um just quickly about this light last week i flashed this on the screen so this right here it was um shared by brother louis on facebook but brother louis got it from another another sister anyway i think by this point it's well known i've i've known this information before but it just popped up at the right time that i needed to use it laminin the molecule laminin is the protein that holds human beings together. Do you notice this shape? Isn't it amazing that God would think so far in the future 
by making the very thing that makes us think of Yahushua make up and play a crucial role in how we are formed. So in short, um, this is a, a molecule protein and it, you can see that it's in the shape of a cross. Now as far as light is concerned, DNA, um, that's what DNA proteins do. They fluoresce for a very short time and then rest for a very long time. It was discovered that when illuminated with visible light, the molecules get excited and light up well enough to be imaged without fluorescent stains. So in other words, your DNA has light in it, is light. So right here, that makes sense when we're talking about light. We know that Yahushua is the light of the world. Okay, we know about salt. You know about a salt. It means being a good person. It means being a saint. We're talking about being the salt of the earth. Okay, rear. This means when you rear up, you know, for, for example, an animal. You have an animal, and if the animal gets on its back legs and it goes, <laughs> like a horse, <laughs> okay, so he's rearing up. It means to rear up your head to appear, okay? So let's read. Uh, you have received the salt, fire, and light of Yah. Fire, we've talked about in this playlist uh, as well. We talked about Yah is a consuming fire. We've also talked about holy fire will burn through the church, right? So we're talking about baptism. We're talking about becoming. We're talking about being purified, okay? And the way that I write this is, is um, going to improve over time. As you can see, the more information we have here and the more I practice writing, the better I can explain. But this is what we have for now. So you have received the salt, fire, and light of Yah. This means wisdom, power, love, and self-control. All of these things we've been talking about in this playlist. Like the salt of the earth, you are filled with goodness. From this, you are becoming bright like a light with a strong passion. Now, this also, saints, now we have the information and we understand that this is also our transformation, okay? Because we have been healed by Holy Yahushua's stripes, and we're going to talk about that more later. So we've been healed by his stripes, so we are becoming, physically, we are being transformed, and two sons of Holy Yahushua, okay? Since then, the authorities have known for certain that in you, there is something stronger than they. You raise up yourself and rear your head. Now, this is shown in uh, Lamentations 363. You see that this is 363 here. Behold, they're sitting down and they're rising up. I am their music. So this is how I have confirmation that I'm correct in my translation because this 363 is the same holy letter that's present here and it's talking about the same thing. It has the same context of what we're talking about in the letter line. So right here, um, rising up and you have right here rear. So rear means to rise up. Here I am their music. If you guys remember in the past couple of videos, what were we talking about? If you look at that arrow, uh, we were talk. We were using sound, right? And we were talking about how the DNA can play music, right? And we were saying how we are a piece of work. We are a symphony because our DNA is music. And we were talking about the song, the song of the 144,000. Not only the 144,000, but also the saints um, who are uh, who escape. So. Literally here, it's talking about I am their music. It is making a reference to the DNA saints and becoming. Because when you rise up, you become, you change your mind, and you show yourself. This is like another way of talking about uh, bearing fruit. You become. When we change our minds to Christ consciousness, we become incorruptible like a new song, a heavenly tree with a new name. And then I put the Bible verses here if you would like to look them up. You remind others and yourself about this changing of mind that must happen. Some people ask about hardships. You see waves and huge walls of water around the shores of a city and are amazed at the marvelous things you see. Your answer remains the same. 
there must be a changing of mind into a tree. And then this is where I explain it in the video. This is uh, episode 28. So that's what that means here. And you can see that in this little text, it's almost impossible for me to explain the enormity of the meaning. But when you have the understanding of these, these words here, you can put it together in your own mind and in your own spirit what it means. This is confirmation that when we change our minds, when we go from that, that dead tree to that living tree, um, when uh, Holy Yahushua, he healed us by... Um, he healed us by his stripes. So when we change <clears throat> our DNA, when our DNA is healed, our mind is healed. We change our mind and we become uh, a new tree. That is letter line 217. All of that is in there, saints. All of that is in there, saints. All of that is in there, saints. Now you look back at this. This is pretty much an image of this Bible verse right here. Here's the trees. These people have died to their um, carnal selves and they are reborn as trees. So if you remember, I'm putting on the screen right here, the sister last week, she read um, the Bible verse. She was explaining how Yahushua healed the blind and the deaf from his saliva because his DNA is in our white blood cells. That's where the healing comes from. It's funny that our white blood cells are called antibodies. <laughs> antibodies that is so funny uh, like being against the body I mean antibody that's funny so she was explaining last week about um, the the brother that was healed by Yahushua he was blind and I believe he was blind from birth and there was the verse where um, they were saying that holy Yahushua came to make it so that the blind could see and those who could see might be blind um, and so the man, when Holy Yahushua healed him, he opened his eyes and he said that he could see men walking around as trees. So this is a sim this is a metaphor saying that when you are born again, okay, and this is symbolic for being born again because that's when you have spiritual sight. When you're born again, that's when you get spiritual sight, right? Um, so when he was born again healed when he was healed by yahushua's when he was healed by the stripes of yahushua he was healed by yahushua's d n a in his saliva okay at that time when he was healed by his stripes he gained spiritual sight not only visual sight but spiritual sight and he could see those people walking around who have also been uh, redeemed or born again they're walking around as trees meaning those people he saw were also um, born again and saved that's what that symbolically that's what that's saying and it would make sense because he was with Yahushua and when Yahushua healed him I'm sure that it was his disciples and his followers that were there with him that would make sense so let's, um, here we have some dates on this, right? So let's see, what is this trying to tell us prophetically? Um, and again, you guys remember this picture comes from Manifest. I'm just going one piece at a time, but this is gonna blow your mind cause it blow my mind, my mind be blowed, okay? So we saw on the picture that it's, the date is uh, June 2nd, 2024. So what does that mean? June 2nd, 2024. So I went back to Matthew 24. You're going to have confirmation for all of this. I'm telling you by the end of the video, you're going to have confirmation for all of it. Okay. Um, Matthew 24. Wow. The timeline. Wow. 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 I can't wait to get to the confirmation. Okay. I just want to bring to your attention some things that will be happening in 2024. So the first and most important thing is that we have the 2024 president, presidential election. Um, president Trump will not be able to run because he will be finished with his two terms. So that means we will have a new president in 2024. Now, if the Prince of Persia arrives, 
appear on t in 2022, as we have understood already in the past, the Antichrist, the Prince of Persia, will be on the main stage in 2022. We will be clear about who he is, his mask will fall, there will be no more dis dissent between uh, groups of Christians. We will all be like, okay, it's him, we're done discussing, okay? 2022 is when that's gonna happen around thereabouts that time. Because of course, as I've explained before, you have the Hebrew New Year, which is different from the Gregorian calendar, and we have two Hebrew New Years, so, the time is more like a wave it's not a you know brick uh, blocks or something like that but we're talking about around that time period now <clears throat> if he is on the scene in 2022 that means he is there just in time for the american president uh, presidential election now i'm not saying that the next president um after trump uh two after his two terms is going to be the prince of persia maybe the prince of persia is not the president of the united states i don't know but it's most likely that he is in some way connected to it. So we will see in the future. Either way, just a note that 2024 is the, the presidential election, okay? I want you to notice what it says here. Um, but he that shall endure until the end, the same shall be saved. All right, that's 2024. Now, it's not exactly the same wording but I want you to realize that it's the same meaning. If we go back and look right here, Revelation 2.17, it says, To him that shall overcome it, I will give to eat the hidden manna. So to overcome is not the same word as endure until the end. But we understand that it means the same thing. If you endure until the end, it means that you overcome the obstacles that are put in your way to, to make it to the end. So it, it has the same meaning, okay? So those Bible verses are uh, lined up, okay? It's saying the same thing. But he that shall endure until the end, the same shall be saved. That is what that is saying here. He that overcometh, you will be given spiritual knowledge and uh, a new name, and a white stone, meaning you will be born again. We can see that right here. Are you guys with me? Now, this is very important because on the, the timeline that we did, when you come to 2025, it says, And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then the end shall come. 2025, as we've spoken before, is when we become uh, the body of Christ on earth. That is when we are transformed, E-D, past tense. It's done, kid. It's a wrap. It's a wrap. It's done. We will be, I don't know how many thousands or millions or billions we are on the earth, but whatever our number is, we will be that many Jesuses walking around on earth. That's what's about to, that's what's going to be happening there. All right. And that's when we will be um, finishing the job of making sure the gospel is preached into the whole world. That that's going to be us doing that. That's the witnesses. That's us. So how is this going to happen in 2025? The way it's going to happen, the way it's going to happen is everything that we've been talking about in this playlist right, right here. This is how it's going to happen. This is a visual representation of what the letter line and the Bible verse 217 is saying, which is the same as what we have been saying in this entire playlist. All glory to the Most High Father. It's not me saying this. It is Ruach HaKadosh, His Holy Spirit, and His Holy um, Son, Holy Yahushua, who has been feeding me, giving me this holy manna, and teaching me to share with you, brothers and sisters, all praise and glory to the Most High Father in Yahushua HaMashiach's holy name. I'm going to show you guys a video that confirms what I what we're talking about here, okay, from a sister who had a dream. I just want to point out something for you to remember until later. 2024 is the time that's written on the tombstone, yes? 24, 
25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31. Seven years from 2024. And we have right here, 2031. What does it say? It is the end of the Sabbath day. But we talked about in the video before when we were doing this timeline that it is the Sabbath year from 2025 to 2032. But if you count from 2024, as the picture says, then it ends in 2031. And now we can clearly see what I didn't understand before. We can understand now. We are to count from 2024 because that's when we are born again. That's when we become trees to be able to do the work that we need to do in 2025. Do you guys see this? The Sabbath year from 2024 falls on 2031. And that is the exact Bible verse that says, but pray ye that your flight be not in winter, neither on the Sabbath day. This is talking about the Sabbath year, saints. This is when we have the window for the escape in these years here. The first escape. Do you remember we talked about that? Because it has to, this is 2031 is the last chance we have to escape before the great and terrible tribulation for then shall be great tribulation. Do you see how this lines up? This, if you count seven years from 2024, you end at 2031 and that is the last chance for us to escape before the great and terrible tribulation according to the timeline in Matthew 24. All right, so guys, I was trying to figure out all the different possible meanings of June 2nd, um, 2024. And so the first thing that came to my mind was that I remember I did a calculation if you remember when I had the four and a half years voice come to me in a dream when President Trump, the day that President Trump um, declared Jerusalem as the capital of Israel. So I just was curious in the past that we've already done this work uh, and I put four years, six months because that's four and a half years. And so I came up with June 6, 2022. And so we were saying, well, that makes sense because 2022 is when the, the Prince of Persia is supposed to show up. So it just was um, giving us one extra year warning before we entered into um, the time period that we are in now, which is the three and a half year time period, which is the beginning of sorrows, 2019. So we had an extra year warning before the three and a half years happened. And at the end of the three and a year, three and a half years process, three and a half year process we expect that the prince of persia will be rising the beginning of him rising to power okay so the date we came up with that was june 6th so i thought that that was ironic it's like wow it's very close to june 2nd it's not far very close june 6th june 2nd very close um on, on the other hand uh 2022 is two years too early for 2024 just bringing that to your attention so what I did was I said, hmm, scratching my head, and I took the same date, the sixth day of December, that's when it happened, 2017, and then I put the date that is on that picture, which is um, 2-6-2024, so that's June 2nd, and I did a calculation, guys, you won't believe it, but it's 237 days, 200, 2,000 and 370 days, but you know you can drop the zero. Uh, so for all intensive purposes, that's my number, 237. What are the odds? <laughs> what are the odds that the day that President Trump announced Jerusalem as the capital of Israel and that on the TV show Manifest, they put this date, and when you count the difference between them, you get 200, 237, which is my my name. Because I, I told you guys in the last few, I've been telling you guys for the past two years, that's another version of my name, 237. I was born on July 23rd. So this is, for me, confirmation um, that this is real. This is real. Something is going on here. This is real. So let's go further. 
Now we're going to get to the confirmation. And guys, I have my tea here. I have my blanket. I have my tea. I suggest you get your blanket and your tea. So sit down because you don't want to fall down. Because, wow, okay? This sister confirms so much. She confirms, well, she confirms that God has given us the Matthew 24 verse. And I understand that to mean the timeline. Okay. Um, we're going to be talking about in a few minutes about how the escape is from the message I'm getting. The message I'm getting is that the escape will be happening at the same time as a, a big explosion. Hey everyone. I have a couple of dreams I have to share. Um, and I have to share them. God made very clear that I was risking wrath by him if I didn't, because I've been stalling again. Okay, so the first dream I had was actually, um, I think just a couple days ago, and it had to do with my husband and myself, and um, we were in, it felt like a dark room, and we were, um, there was like a big window or a couple windows next to us, and suddenly we heard a big commotion outside, and I don't know if it was an explosion, if it was something that, like a missile strike, but something just kind of like a blast happened. And immediately he and I leapt up and, and w looked out the windows. And I noticed it looked like a, a building across the street. Now, I don't know where I was. I didn't recognize this scene or the city. I looked across the street and I saw uh, very vividly smoke just coming out of this window. And the hole around the window was blackened. <clears throat> Okay, and then immediately in front of this building was like a smoldering mass. I don't know if it was a car, a tank, what, but there was something just smoldering. And these two soldiers came running over. And if, like they, they heard the sound, they came to investigate. And I had the feeling that this wasn't their doing. This was, I think, I don't know if these soldiers were American. I had a feeling they were. They didn't look like foreign people or soldiers. So... I hear the first soldier say to the second soldier, he's, on, he's the one on the left, and he said, I think this was an act of God. And the second soldier was quiet. He didn't say anything. And the first soldier said, because there is something engraved or something like that has been blasted into this building that looks like words, like God had struck this building with some words. And he said, I, I've, I see very clearly the letters M-A. And then he said, that means Matthew from the book of Matthew. He was, and I, and I knew immediately M.A. meant Matthew. <clears throat> and then he named some numbers, which I'm not, and I, oh, for the life of me, I have been racking my brain trying to get the verse, the chapter and the verse of these numbers. Um, <clears throat> but when he said this, I got really excited that he was acknowledging this was from God. And Brad and I, my husband and I, were in this room watching and observing through a window and I don't know if we were hiding, but as soon as we heard him acknowledge God, um, I got real close to the window and I realized the window was open and there was just a screen between me and the outside. And I said, real close up to the window, I said, praise Jesus, <laughs> really loud. And my husband over to my right, he heard me. And then he said even louder, praise Jesus, even louder. It's like he took my cue, but when he did proclaim it, it was even louder. Um, oh, and let me just say, after we said that through the window, I knew the guards heard us, or the, the soldiers heard us, but they didn't say anything. Um, and I had the feeling like I needed to say that to encourage them. Like, there is support. There is um, people here. The, I felt like the first soldier kind of went out on a limb when he said this is a, an act of God. Like, he was kind of saying it, I felt like, for the first time, even to himself. And the second guard was really quiet and not really encouraging him. So I felt like I need to say something and, and encourage him that, yes, this is God. So then I woke up and I thought, okay, Matthew, Matthew, book of Matthew, what is he telling me? So when I got the book of Matthew uh, in that dream, I was really trying to pray over it, And I felt like it was possibly either chapter 24, verse 11, or chapter 11, verse 24. Okay. So the dream I had last night, <laughs> oh, here we go. Um, I'm in a city and I'm with my husband and we're in this city. And what's really unique about this is 
I'm, I'm always given symbols and dreams, and I know it's kind of a shorthand of God to a short or shorthand method of God just to say, here's a symbol, and it means all this. It's not going to look just like this, but this is what it. This is to give you some extra meaning to something. So it looked like this city was in. I can only describe it as a snow globe, like it was, it was like a big round circle um, around our world. Okay. Um, and I was within this circle and I, I was looking out onto the city and I was in the city just on the on the ground among the people and this angel comes down and he just kind of sets down like he's coming through the air and he sets down and he's tall and slim and dark hair and he's telling me that he said there is going to be a great explosion and the rapture will happen within seven days the rapture will happen within seven days the rapture will happen within seven days um i had the sense that the explosion would be known the world wide like it would be so big so um it would it would basically impact the world I right away felt alarm when he heard, like I heard that, like I felt like this is about to happen soon. And um, so then he he went away, like he went back up to heaven. And um, so I'm talking to my husband and we're like, we're, we're right away saying, okay, what's going to happen soon? Then all of a sudden the explosion just happened. Like all of a sudden, bam, boom, there it was. And we just knew it just happened. And I, I start getting really urgent and I start running around telling people the rapture's going to happen soon. It's going to happen now. This is it. And it's so interesting because in this dream, you know, we've been on, I know a lot of us have been on here for a long time feeling like we've been led up to this moment in history and we're, we're, we're positive it's going to happen. But in that dream, the surety of it happening was so, um, so incredibly strong. I literally was thinking in my head, I can't believe it's finally here. It's about to happen. Like the rapture is going to happen within seven days. And then the angel came back and he, he sat back down on the earth. Like he came floating and he sat back down on the earth. Like he stood standing there and he said, and I told him, I said, so now it's going to happen in seven days. And he said, I just had word from the Lord. The Lord has said it's going to happen either today or tomorrow. So in my dream, that day of the explosion will happen that day or the very next day. And then I was really <laughs> panicking and running around and I'm telling people in the dream, the rapture's going to happen. The rapture's going to happen like any minute. And I'm like, just so frantic trying to wake people up before it's too late. Suddenly it was happening. We were in the air. Like it, it was just like, like right that, that moment. And as I'm being pulled away, I'm, I'm still watching the earth and now I'm outside what looks like this snow globe. And I realize I'm now away from the earth. I was inside the earth in this world that we know of the earth. And then I'm like pulled up out of it. And I had the feeling that God just went, I'm taking my people now. And he just pulled us out. Like he didn't even want us anywhere near this destruction. He just went, I'm not waiting any longer. And he just pulled them right out. And we were just pulled right out. And then this is where it gets weird. Like all of a sudden I'm now seeing, it's like I'm given views and visions of what's now happening on the earth. And it was so interesting because I've never really thought about this before, but when, when all of the Christians and those who are so pure in Christ and who love Jesus and are spreading that gospel, when we're taken away, it's like someone just pulled the plug out of the earth. It just felt completely like all the energy, all the... Um, just all that electricity, that, that 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 love, that the Holy Spirit basically was just sucked out, and it felt like somebody literally just unplugged the energy. All the all the um, power that was surrounding our Earth was just completely unplugged, and it literally looked like in shadow, like there was. It looked dead, and I saw my. All of a sudden, I found myself in this office building, and I'm watching this man who had gotten left behind, and he's running around full of fear, but his, he was very preoccupied with the business, his business. And he was frantic. Like, I'm not, he's like, I cannot leave my business. I cannot leave it. I've built this. This is, it is, is something that so consumed him 
all this time that when he was faced with losing it, he couldn't let it go. And he he was worried that looters were going to get in and, uh, and get into his business. And he was obsessed with protecting his business. Like he was so earthbound. And he literally like got this rifle out and he was <clears throat> just waiting. And I'm yelling to him and I realize I'm in the spirit and I'm looking in the, and I, I felt like his, he was in blackness, like it was in darkness, but I could see into the darkness. I could see him in shadow and I could see him clearly. It was almost like black and white movie, but I was maybe not, I don't know. I can't describe it, but it's like in shadow, but I saw him and I said, you have to let it go. You must let it go. And he, it's like, I don't think he heard me, but it's like he sensed me and he whirled around and pointed his gun at me. And I don't know if he was shooting, perhaps he did. I didn't feel anything, but he, he couldn't listen. He couldn't let it in the voice. And I, and then I realized there was, there were others like me around me and I felt like someone to my left, but I was just focused on him trying to wake him up. And, um, so then that was the, the last of the dream Then I woke up. Did you guys hear that? Did you hear that? She said, he, the angel said, after the explosion, the escape will happen within seven days. Saints, that is sim symbolic or spiritual talk for the seven-year Sabbath that I just showed you a few minutes ago on Matthew timeline that the sister just got confirmation about in this dream. That it, it, was, uh, um, it was Yah who gave us Matthew 24, it's literally Yahushua telling us literally what's going to happen in the end days. He gave me this timeline. He gave me the ability to read this timeline. The sister is confirming that. And then the angel is coming and telling her that seven days from the explosion will be the escape. That is exactly what Matthew 24 says. When we looked at it, um, from this time to this time, it's saying that at any point in this time frame, the escape can happen. And we know that because it says, but pray ye that your flight be not in winter. So we understand that the flight, literally flying, the flight, the escape, could happen at any time. If we're able to pray and say, oh, it can happen in the spring, it can happen in the summer, it can happen in the winter, it's it's gonna happen when, when he decides it's gonna happen. And this is the window of time that it could happen at any time before that. It just has to happen before the great and terrible tribulation. So that's what the angel was saying in her dream is that um, he has decided that it will happen within one or two years she says days in her dream, but that means for us, it means years, one or two years within the explosion time, which would mean probably somewhere in here, because this is when it says, let him, let them, which be in Judea, flee to the mountains. Um, and then let him, which is on the housetop, not come down to take any of his things out of the house. Um, this sounds like trouble. Right? We don't know what the trouble is, it doesn't say, but if you can't go to your house to get your stuff, it's, it's not safe, right? So th this could be like around this time here, and so that means somewhere in here is when the escape could happen any, anywhere in here, right? And that fits, that totally fits the timeline. Anytime, these, these years right here. The angel said it, the sister said it. Okay, so there's something else that I'm understanding with this message. What it seems is that, um, and I left it up in the air. I was like, I don't know, we'll see later. From what I see right now, it seems that we do come back, but not in our physical bodies, the same bodies that we have now, um, in some kind of either spiritual form, or we come back in like a different dimension where we're able to interact with people on earth to help them, I guess like angels in a way, uh, but not directly be, um, they, like they won't be able to see us, but, or they, I don't know how to explain that, but I've, I've gotten like three dreams from uh, three different people who are telling the same story. And, and this sister, the video that you just saw, she explained that in the dream where she said, 
you know, she could uh, yell at this guy, she could see this guy, and she was trying to help the guy, but he um, wasn't willing to hear her voice. So this has to do with the arc that we talked about last week and coming in and out of the arc. When we escape, it seems like we're going to go to some some place in another dimension. We're going to be trained and, and all of that stuff. And then we will be brought back in a spiritual form or in a different dimension where we can interact and, and help people here on Earth um, and interact with them. But but not as we are right now, like in a different form. And I, I, don't, I don't understand that. I can't explain that. Okay, so this sister here, Zab, this is Sister Zab, and this sister here, this sister here, uh, her, her channel is called A Change Is Coming. I'm going to show you um, some videos next week where both of them have had dreams and they both confirm what we've been talking about in this playlist and in their dreams that confirm what we've been talking about they also bring up the point when after we escape we come back now this is scriptural it's in the scriptures and we've read it before we've gone over it before i just didn't talk about it too much because i don't know i don't have the information but it, it seems from what i understand from their dreams which confirm what we've talked about it seems like we, when we escape, we go somewhere, like it says in the scriptures, for I guess three and a half years. And when we come back, we are able to interact with people and help people, but not be like we're in a different dimension, but we're able to interact with people here. Um, so I can't talk too much about it because it's not my direct message from Yahushua. It is their dreams but like I said their dreams confirm everything else so it makes sense now another confirmation about the escape this is why the video was called we we have to be like holy Yahushua if you want to escape you have to be like holy Yahushua there's no other way you can't kind of be like him you can't almost be like him you can't be halfway like him you can't be like him sometimes you have to be like holy yahushua 100 percent all the way i know guys i believe me you know it's very easy i'm sitting here on the camera and i'm, I'm telling you this and it sounds like i got it all done like i'm already like jesus y'all need to get with it you know it's not it's not like not at all not at all um um, the more I'm telling you the message, the more I'm like, uh, 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 I got a lot of work to do, you know? Um, so we are definitely all in the same boat. Anyway, this right here that I have on the screen is confirmation to we have to be like Holy Yahushua. And I know, it, I know most of you guys watching this video don't need convincing. It's pretty obvious and clear. It's written in the Bible. But for whatever reason, the Holy Spirit wants us to understand why. So that's what we're going to talk about here. The way that the letter lines work is that I'm given them at the same time Ruach HaKadosh is teaching me the meanings of the words. And that's why this process is so long. And it, the book won't be finished until 2020. 3 2024 it should 2023 2024 it'll be finished at the time that we're supposed to be sons of yah so perfect timing i didn't make that up so i started i started typing it up um in 2016 i got the message in december 2015 i don't remember the day i have it i have it somewhere where it says the designer is to write everything into uh dis destruction every day and I got that message, and then that's when I started writing every day, but that was December 2015, so by the time I really was writing every day, it was, it was 2016. So seven years from 2016 is 2023. That's when the book is going to be finished. But again, with the Hebrew um, New Year's, that can, that's 2023, 2024, depending on the month that I finished the book. So all of that to say, the process I'm going through is I'm given a letter line. Every day I decode at least one letter line. If I can do more, more power to me. But I do at least one. And so whatever's going on in my life at that time is what the letter line is, 
the comment is about what's going on in my life at that time. So um, this letter line, 892, is what I was working on the day that I got these two dreams, one from Sister Tia and one from Sister Polly. And they pretty they confirm this letter line. Let's start by reading the letter line. To shed forth chaff as diffusive, apple of an eye as a gate product. So I want you guys to realize that the apple of the eye, that is the pineal gland. Because we have the eye. Okay. And then we know that it's the pineal gland because it's written right here as a gate. And we've talked extensively about how the pineal gland is our door. It is our gate, our connection to the spiritual world. To be able to hear, have spiritual ears, have spiritual eyes, that is your, your pineal gland that allows us to do that. And we're talking about physically in your body. And that's why you have the Illuminati pyramid with the eye in it because they are the gatekeepers. Remember, it's written right here. Now this shaft, this is the wheat. So you know how many Bible stories we have about the wheat and the tares. So we are the wheat. Now the chaff is the, the um, skin or the, I don't know what it's called, the outside of the, the wheat. So just think of it this way. If I have a wheat stalk and I go like this, then the, the wheat would be diffusing. It would be going everywhere, scattering everywhere, okay? Imagination, taking away of life, the act of killing, slaying, murder, cheapness, not question island of innocence. You are coming out of your chaff like a grain of wheat shedding forth. Now this is a Bible verse that explains about what the wheat means. You can look it up. Um, so this meaning is the same as rear your head, right? We become stronger, we become hol like Holy Yahushua and we arrive, we appear, we, we're coming out. And so you are coming out of your chaff like a grain of wheat shedding forth, Matthew 13, and changing diffusely. So saints, I want you to see this word here so you understand I'm not making this up. It's written right here, diffusive. So when you go and you look at the word diffusive, this is from uh, Wikipedia, and you see the meaning of diffuse, diffuse, diffusion. So this is us. This is when you add uh, Holy Yahushua's DNA and you see how Holy Yahushua's DNA takes over until we become like Holy Yahushua. This is the process that we are going to go through. This is the change written right here. And this change happens through the gate and we become a new product, a new product. So we are changing diffusely. The change you are going through is the result, product, or process of your third eye pineal gland, also known as a door or gate. This is not new age. I explain in depth why it's not new age, if you only take the time to see the information. This is also described in the Bible as having spiritual eyes to see. This comes from 3230. So I put these two Bible verses to just explain um, the pineal gland for those who don't have the time to do the research themselves. Uh, Genesis 32, 30, and Jacob called the name of the place Pineal, for I have seen God face to face and my life is preserved. So this is explaining that with the Pineal or in the Pineal gland, in the Pineal place is where you have the ability to see God face to face, okay? Matthew 6, 22, the light of the body is the eye and if, there, and if therefore thine eye be single, thine whole body shall be full of light. So here it is explaining that we're not talking about two eyes, that you have two eyes. We're not talking about those. We're talking about one eye and the one eye that we have is in our thalamus gland, which is the pineal gland. So this is where the light of the body comes in which confirms that it is the gate because we know the light comes from holy Yahushua is the light and we understand that that is what holds our bodies together it is our dna that gives off light right the, i mean it all when you have the past information we've been talking about all this time it should just be clicking in your mind like oh 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 click 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 Especially if you if you have the Holy Spirit, if your Holy Yahushua is teaching you these things already in dreams, you should be like, click, click, click. Dreams or visions or whatever is going on with you. 
There is a close call near death experience for someone in your life. Now, I told you when I write this, I have to try to connect the spiritual meaning, but I also have to try to bring it down to an earthly meaning. Like spiritually, it means this, but as far as your actual life, what you're living, how can that be represented? Because it is whatever's happening in the spirit world is happening in the, phys uh, in the material world. Everything that happens, happens first in the spiritual world. And then we see the repercussions, the manifestations of it in the, the physical world, right? So, and I got this uh, letter line personally um, twice. And in the two years that I got the letter line, one, my mother almost died. She had uh, two aneurysms and she had to have brain surgery. She's alive. She's alive and well and fine. But I got this letter line that year that she was ill. And then another year I got it, my aunt um, who had had lupus, I told you about her before, and she almost died. She had a stroke and she was in the hospital, but she did not die at that time. So um, that's why when I'm putting this um, un information together, I can say, okay, well, in my life, I experienced this at that time. So it could possibly, I don't, it's not proven yet. I'm, I'm working on it. Theoretically, if other people experience this letter line and, and if they too have had a near death experience, in their life when they receive this letter line then if i have at least two people that confirm then i can say this is confirmed that that means this okay it's not confirmed yet but that's personally how i experience this letter line but on the other side when you're looking at it from a spiritual point of view look at the picture this is a near-death experience meaning you don't die but guess what what doesn't kill you makes you stronger Okay, so we don't die, but the people who overcome, but the people who endure are the ones who will become these trees like Holy Yahushua. Do, do you see it? Do you see it? Do you see it? So back to the letter line. Do you guys understand how the letter lines bring clarity to your dreams, to your life, to what's going on? And we've explained in this playlist how it works, why it works. Yeah. It is his language. It is the image of his name. It is alive. It is holy. Without question, things are cheap for you as you are innocent. Your father, whom you consider rich, will grant that you inherit all that you see. But I, holy Yahushua, reclaim to you that I shall give you what I shall say if you listen. So open your ears. I think I put the YouTube video about uh, the pineal gland and it's on my website. If you guys want to see it, just go to the website. It's there. This part right here, it could be talking about your earthly father. Again, at the time that I received this letter line here was when I was right in the process of understanding what the letter lines were, decoding them, and the beginning of me writing them down in a journal. So it was the beginning of me hearing Holy Yahushua, understanding what he was saying, <clears throat> and documenting it, right? So it, this was the beginning of that process. Also at that time, um, when I got this letter line, I received, I would have received an inheritance, but my aunt didn't die. So I didn't get the inheritance at that time. But that's when I was made aware of what I would inherit from, it wasn't my father, but it was my aunt. So there you go, to give you context as to what that could possibly mean. The confirmation of all of this comes from Sister Polly. I whited out her email address and Sister Tia um, from Facebook, uh, Wakefulness Theology Group. Journal entry dated 714. Dream Messenger and I were in Hawaii, Paradise, Heaven, and we were trying to figure out something. We went to a cafe where we were served coffee with a red color in it. I understood wine and coffee. Now, it's about coffee, because who, care, who cares about coffee? I mean, really, coffee is not that big of a deal. And for some reason, spiritually, it has become a big deal, because I've been telling you guys um, since I did the... had to be maybe one year ago, because I did the Daniel uh, fast. And after I did that fast, I lost... Uh, my craving for coffee. I haven't had a cup, cup of coffee since. 
And I've used it in a few videos to talk about the physical change that you undergo when you're born again. And so she's talking about the coffee, right? Which would be your old symbolically from what I've been talking about. It would represent your old self before you were born again. Now the wine, we know that wine represents the blood of holy Yahushua. Now we know that from the Bible, it's very clear. Uh, and we, we also know that we are healed by his stripes. So it is in the, the white blood cells, not in the red blood cells, but at the same time, um, in general, when we talk about wine, we're talking about symbolically the blood of Holy Yahushua. And that's why for communion, we drink wine because it is symbolic of drinking uh, his blood. <laughs> it is, that's what it is. From her dream, it is showing that we are being transformed and just like this diffusion right here. So this would be coffee, for example, then you put in the blood of Holy Yahushua, and then you swirl that around, and then you become a full cup of wine. You started as coffee, you end up as wine. And in her dream, we were maybe like right here because she said it was half and half, okay? Which would be true. <laughs> I ain't even gonna front. I ain't even gonna lie. I got stuff I need to work on, y'all. So that I'm not even arguing with it. But the point, the good news is that I'm gonna be a full cup of wine in time when it's time, okay? And, uh, you know, God be willing, so will all of you. So that is confirmation to this diffusive uh, Apple Eye Gate product. Do you see? Now this is from Sister Tia. She had a dream. She said this cup right here, it was in the shape, it was in this shape like a cup and DNA shapes in the middle. So here we get blood that represents the DNA. Okay. And here she saw actual DNA in case it wasn't clear enough. The Holy Spirit was like, just in case it is not clear enough, <laughs> let me show you actual DNA stripes. Okay. Um, so DNA shapes in the middle, growing bright, glowing brightly. So that even shows, you know, the light. We just talked about the light and the DNA glows, right? And spinning slowly. So this is the diffusion. It's spinning, okay? In the floor, it was shaped like a drum with DNA inside of it, and it scared her, and she doesn't know why. So sister, I'm going to tell you why it scares you, because it's a scary process. I'm going through it. I'm sure a lot of us are going through it. I know we are all going through it. Everyone who is in the body of Christ, we're all going through this together at the same time. We're all in the same boat. And it is scary. I'm not even going to try to lie. I'm going to be like, I, I ain't scared. Y'all weak. Y'all weak. I got this together. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. I'm scared too. Um, there's a difference between being afraid because we're not afraid. But just because you're not afraid doesn't mean it isn't scary. Do you see what I mean? Do you see the difference? So you can look at something that's really, really scary and you can be like, that is terrifyingly scary, and but not internalize it because you know that you're saved. You know that you're under the wing of the Most High Father. You know that you're protected. You know that you have angels all around you and they have you in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. You know that. So you're not internalizing fear. But that don't mean the situation ain't scary. It's scary, okay? And I'm talking about my own life and my own situation. And I'm sitting here like, what? In the words of Brother David, what? <laughs> what? I don't know how, how, I don't know how all of this is going to work out in my personal life. It's, 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 it's it, you know, it is scary. It is. But um, we're going to get through it, saints. We're going to get through it together. And um, the, Most High Father, the Most High Father's will will be done. We submit to him and we claim the victory. And we, and we know now it should be clear as every, to everybody. To anybody who has watched this whole playlist, it should be super clear to you right now that we're going from this to this in the story. The time, we have the time. Matthew 24, which was given to us by Holy Yahushua, 
okay? From his own mouth and from the sister's dream, we understand that this was a gift from Yah given to us to tell us the time. The time is that from the explosion that will happen, we have a seven year window where we can escape at any time from in that time. And most likely it will be cut short and we could be escaping within one or two years of that explosion. It is, it is written. It is written. And every year that we go forward, every year that these uh, Bible verses come true, then, then every year there's just more and more confirmation. Okay? There will be more and more confirmation as we, as we live. So uh, just to wrap up this point about this picture right here, I'm going to give you the Bible verse that just... It I mean, it just says what it is. This Bible verse right here explains what this is exactly. Um, so 617, this is 217, just, just saying. We have 17, we have 17, we have 1717. 17. We're going to talk about in a few minutes the 1717 code. That's right here, 1717. 17. Just, just point it out. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid, how shall we, that are, that are dead to sin, live any longer therein? Know ye not that so many of us were baptized into Jesus Christ, were baptized into his death? Into his death. Baptized into his death. Therefore, we are buried with him. Buried. We are buried with him by baptism into death that like as Christ was raised up raised saints rear when you rear your head when you rear your head you raise yourself up and rear your head raise rear it means the same thing that like as Christ was raised up from the dead the dead by the glory of the Father, even so, we also walk in the newness of life. He saw men walking around like trees. These trees are walking around. So we also should walk in newness of life. So now we understand that this right here represents newness of life, is represented as being a tree. Do you see how the Holy Spirit is teaching us this language? Do you see how this language exists if you know how to read it? Right here, it's telling us the men were walking around as trees. Even so, we should walk in newness of life. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, that's what this picture says, we have been planted together in the likeness of his death right here, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. And this right here represents the likeness of his resurrection. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, this was represented by the coffee, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin, for he that is dead is freed from sin. Boom chakalaka, was that not, at, is, is that, could that be any clearer? You know, it's funny because when we understand the spiritual language and you go back and you read the Bible, you see that they were not even like, I guess, I guess it is kind of coded because you have to know what it means, but once you know what the code means, it's clear as day. They didn't stumble on their words. They didn't stutter. It's as clear as day. So when you understand, we already talked about the dates. This is the date, saints, that we are going to be transformed. Okay? I don't know about June 2nd. I don't, I don't know why they said June 2nd, but we have understood that that date is 237. 237, 2,370 days from the time that Trump declared Jerusalem the capital. So we know that somehow, symbolically, this date is going to represent a change that is uh, happening in us, where as not individual people, but as a body of Christ on earth, we will be um, 
appearing, we will be ready to raise up our head as a body of Christ on earth to begin doing the work we have to do until the escape. Any questions? I also want you to notice that you have symbolically, you have a man, you have a son. This is his son. This is the father. This is the son. And then you have a woman which would, in the TV show, she's the sister. But we understand symbolically, this is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. I didn't go into breaking down the meaning of these names. Um, or, you know, someone else out there. I have other stuff I need to talk about. But feel free to look up the actors' names of these characters. And I'm sure you're going to find a symbolic meaning. and um, Or the names, the fictional names of these characters, you're going to find a symbolic meaning as well. Um, I don't have time to do that work, but we already understand this is representing the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. This is representing the a burial with uh, Holy Yahushua so that we are raised up uh, with him by baptism into death. And being raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father so that we can walk in newness of life. It's a wrap. It's a wrap. So now when you're watching this TV show, you can have better clarity as to what's going on. All right, so the codes. The codes are our names hidden inside of us. Uh, I showed you these two videos just uh, last week, and they were explaining how w the house is representing the ark, and that we're able to go in and out of the ark, and how the code is in us, and, and because we have the code, we can go in and out of the ark, and evil people are not able to enter into the ark. So um, 1717 represents the arcs, and I've showed you that before. So here we're on the 1919 and the 1414. 1414 it represents the bridal army and the second coming of Holy Yahushua. 1919 represents Satan army and Armageddon. But um, you can also see just looking physically that the four here is very easily like a nine. It's just all you have to do is kind of round up this point right here and it would become a nine. And that is very um, symbolic because we've talked about how Satan tries to, well, Satan copies and distorts and he tries to he tries to usurp the role of Yah. So this is visually another example of how he tries to copy, um, which you can see all it takes is just, you know, you make that four a little round and you have 19. So uh, saints, these are gates. All right, saints, I'm running out of time here. I won't be able to finish it. Believe me, I really, really want to, <laughs> but I can't. I will come back and, and finish explaining that next week. We've already talked about 2323. Uh, quickly, the 88 eight, uh, represents time travel, travelers, and it's time. Yeah, I won't have time to finish. I will have to do 88 next time. So, but next time I will show you how 88 is time because it's literally the movement of the sun and the moon. I'm going to show you some videos that explain the connection between the lightning, uh, the nukes, and the escape, and time, and time. There's a connection between 88, the lightning, and the nukes, and the escape. I'm going to show you that next week. I'm going to show you, uh, explain more about how we are travelers and how that um, is connected. I'm going to remind I'm going to bring back this message we got from Sister Polly and explain now that you'll have all the information you'll understand better what this message is saying. And it's saying what we have already said it meant because we talked about it in another video, but I'll bring it up for your memory to remind you. Probably it will probably take me another video, two videos from now to wrap up the point about the escape um, to also bring up the letter lines to help you guys have clarity and give you more confirmations about everything we've talked about. And uh, at that point, hopefully, I believe, unless Ruan Kakadesh tells me otherwise, we should be finished with this part of the shield. Remember, all of this is the shield. All of this information is what's going to protect you from deception and um, things that are to come, especially concerning the... Uh, 
technology and all of that is that is coming so hopefully this will give you uh, the faith and the strength to be able to endure until the end and overcome as we have talked about so saints uh, unfortunately I'm kind of bummed because there's so much I want to tell you there's so much to share with you and it's just not enough time um, in one video but I pray that you are going back and you are you have seen all the, the playlists that I've done before it's on my website go to the video page of my website I give you the order of all the playlists and if you watch those videos up until this point it should be crystal clear I mean there should be no no question especially when you put that together with what Holy Yahushua and Ruach HaKadosh is teaching you personally with your dreams with your visions with um, what you see in the manifested world it all um, says the same story over and over if you just have the spiritual literacy to be able to see it and and read it and that's what wakefulness theology is it is a, a blessing a gift from the most high father to give us the ability to read his language to know his name his holy living name love you saints so very much in christ i pray that you're well i keep you all in my prayers um and I, I pray you have a wonderful, beautiful Sabbath. All praise, glory, and honor to the Most High Father. Holy is Yahushua. See you next week to continue this adventure. Shalom, saints. Mwah.